Um, so a wee bit of background about myself, what we did and the results of what we did. And we're, we'll give four different aspects of um, what the vets talked about and the negative and positive impacts on their mental health. <coughs> Excuse me, and then we'll talk about some results. <coughs> Excuse me, the next steps. So I come from the Highlands of Scotland. Uh, that's the view from the field in front of my house. And up in the top left is the campus where I work. And that's some of the livestock that we have visiting the campus every so often. They live there. So it's a very rural setting, uh, a very remote rural uh, veterinary practices. So I'm a behavioural scientist. My background is in actually human health and rural health and mental health, um, but uh, very much working in rural areas. So uh, in this job, I've had a really brilliant summer of going round a lot of agricultural shows in uh, Scotland, speaking to farmers and livestock vets. Um, this is a photo that was taken at the Lauren Show, which was very, very hot and sunny and beautiful. And I haven't shown you any rainy photos, but there have been a few of them as well. So by means of background, I'm sure you'll be familiar with a lot of this, so I'll just whiz through it. Um, some of the stressors associated with veterinary practice. Hours worked is not a surprise to most people. Client expectations, unexpected outcomes when things just don't go as to plan, and negative outcomes. Um, challenges when people are so busy in keeping up with the knowledge and uh, keeping up with changes in technology. So these are the findings of a couple of uh, report so far. Some of the risk factors, and this is a compliment, <laughs> is uh, high achieving individuals. They've done well academically, it's a very demanding academic uh, degree to get and qualifications, but with that there are tendencies to perfectionism, conscientiousness, which is good in one hand, but challenging to live with that on the other hand, and more likely if uh, with a neuroticism to feel anxiety, worry, and all these other negative impacts, which are risk factors for, men for <coughs> mental illness. The, the, the reference has fallen off the bottom of this, but it, I can give it to you. Uh, it's observations and reflections of vets in practice. So they turn unrealistic ideals of expertise back in on themselves so that they are just doubting themselves. And then that slips into cycles of self-doubt and worry. Then the challenge of persuading their clients of their own competence, especially if they're a new vet, a new livestock vet who just goes out to a farm and there's an older farmer who is not really respecting the fact that they've got some great knowledge just from, uh, from graduating but they don't value the fact that they're not livestock, um, they don't know anything about animal husbandry and they haven't been in farming. So that then makes it worse and they start struggling to persuade themselves of their own competence. And the word shock has been used for people who graduate when they start practicing and the shock of real world challenging settings so when it comes specifically to livestock veterinary practice, there's a, been a couple of studies, and it, it's about the changes and challenges. So um, the changes in the profession, it's much more now being part of a farm management team. It's not about the expert going to the farm and giving advice. <coughs> there's advice from a whole pile of sources. And it, a, th more about a disease prevention focus certainly much more about earning trust and you know there's not an assumption that there'll be trust when a vet arrives on the farm and that trust can I've spoken to a livestock vet who said it took 10 years to build a trusting relationship with a farmer so that's very that's a long time for somebody who's just graduated to start getting a uh, to earn trust a uh, different business model of veterinary practices uh, and different market demands. And as well as that, it was kind of mentioned earlier, there's a pool uh, in two different directions from the efficiency 
of uh, for production, food production, and uh, also environmental and ethical considerations, sometimes pulling in very different directions. So um, I came along in my job in October, and there had been a colleague had uh, been interviewing a lot of vets and farmers, and it, I read all the transcripts and for another piece of work. And I was really struck by the challenges that these vets were facing. And so we, I raised the issue of mental health. And so we reviewed the transcripts looking at uh, the kind of impacts on mental health. The, the, the vets who were interviewed were not asked about their mental health explicitly. They were asked about their experiences of managing disease, livestock diseases. So this is just some of the stuff that was picked up. So there was uh, 10 livestock vets interviewed uh, and all in Scotland within a period of time. So the results. So there's a, a doing the negatives and positives of, uh, of the four different types of things. So it's aspects of the job. The vets talk very strongly about how, how much job satisfaction they get. The f feeling that they've helped somebody. Feeling that they're doing what they're trained to do. And, you know, seeing the farmer have success with his stock. Interestingly, though, I think that the, the vet is experiencing this almost by proxy or by chance that they're seeing that the, vet, that the farmer is doing quite well. And so it's actually, it's more, they're not necessarily being thanked very much by the farmer. And I've certainly spoken to farmers who it wouldn't, it wouldn't occur to them to thank a vet. <laughs> so the negative aspects of the job will... Um, the impacts of their decisions so that it's not just even about the impact on the animal there's the impact to the the financial impacts for the farmer so that's quite a worry when uh, some of the vets have talked about and as well as that just the absolute stress of workload and uh, facing having to um, take samples of 200 sheep and also juggling health promotion, disease prevention advice, thinking about the farm and communicating and all these different challenges. So the relationship with the farmers is very interesting. They'll do the negative one first. The vets talk about the frustration of when, vet, when the farmers just don't listen and don't take, take on their advice. And they say, you know, if you can't get them talking, and you can't get them to understand, sometimes you feel like you're on a, onto a lost cause. So it's depressing and demotivating, and uh, it's not easy to go back to the same farmer who's n ignoring your advice. On the other hand, when it's a positive relationship, vets and farmers talk about that relationship in terms of friendship, not just a business relationship. So... It's, and it's very rewarding and satisfying to have that relationship. And this, uh, the phrase at the bottom was used, uh, healthy, far healthy animals, happy farmer, happy vet. And for me, that sums it up quite, quite a lot. And if you moving on to the relationship with animals, it's a wee bit like what Rebecca said. The vets take a lot of pleasure from healthy animals. They know, and, and the longer term relationship when a, flo when a flock or a herd is doing well, that gives the vet a lot of job satisfaction and pleasure. And, but the, one of the problems with that is that it's almost job satisfaction by proxy again. It's by seeing the success of the farmers, by witnessing the health of the animals improve if it does, then they feel good. But there's not a direct relationship, which I'll talk about later. The negative side of the animals is again, a wee bit, Rebecca talked about the impact of culling, mass culling, but uh, even on a shorter term, on a, on a, you know, on a smaller scale, 
um, when vets come on scene on, on a farm to see poor animal health. And that's especially bad when they've already given that farmer advice about how to prevent it happening. And they use words like dreading arriving on farm and dreading what they're going to see. So the communication with farmers, it, it feeds into that self-doubt and uh, questioning themselves. And so the, you can see there, they're saying, maybe it's our fault. That's two different quotes that said, maybe it's our fault. So when they're seeing things not doing well on the farm, there is something about them blaming themselves for it, it not working out. But when it does work well, when the communication does work, when people see that, um, you know, you know, the, the farmer's in a really difficult situation. They re they're really upset and stressed, and they work together, and there's a positive outcome. That's really rewarding. Again, the thank you very much from the farmer was mentioned here, but that was the only time it was mentioned. And I have talked to farmers about uh, vets' mental health, and they have just said it just didn't occur to them to think of the vet in that way. They, they, and sometimes they've even said, you know, I wouldn't want to say thank you because that might make the bill bigger. So there's a, a cynicism about that. So I, I found when I was reading through the transcripts that there were a lot of challenges that the vets were having to face. And so I looked into the whole literature about what could be done. And these are some of the recommendations. The development of coping resources, so focusing on resilience and coping to avoid burnout. And actually, I, took, I found a really good book. I read this woman's PhD, which was about burnout in vets. And I, I learned a lot from that and since found that she's written a book. So it's um, Nadine Hamilton, and I think she's, it's either Australian or New Zealand, um, but it's, it's really excellent. Again, so she talks about learning psychological strategies for coping. Except uh, there's different, she goes through a few different types of therapies and the different types of approaches. And her, to focus on the positives, about working in the profession as part of this. So it's a positive psychology. And uh, then ha learning tactics and techniques for knowing how to fail and deal with when things go wrong. And I'm also interested in how that help can be made accessible. And we, talk we heard about um, not having signals, but actually mobile phones, even if, the, if they're uploaded um, with materials, can be, you know, people carry them about a lot of the time. Uh, and so they're discreet and they're anonymous sometimes. So they've been found to be a very effective tool in helping people to monitor and manage their mental health. So my next steps, were based a little bit on what that advice was about using some of the, uh, the cognitive behavioral therapy approach of using some mechanism to break a cycle of negative thoughts, breaking that cycle of negative, of self-doubt, questioning their worth, questioning, uh, you know, feeling that they're not doing well, feeling that they're failing. It's if anything that can break that cycle and that's the, 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 the figure on the left is t drawn from CBT. Um, so if you can actually get in there at some point to break that cycle, that's the moment that can make all the difference for people. And, you know, illustrating to vets that they are making a difference. And sometimes they, as a profession, I think there is a lack of recognition, as we heard from the previous talk, about the contribution that is made. And uh, so I'm really interested in seeing what mechanisms could be 
um, developed to highlight the contribution of vets, not just um, livestock vets, not just as a profession, but breaking that down so that they re see from their routine activities what a difference they're making. So that in a moment of feeling low, they can refer to that and say, no, that, you know, it'll challenge that negative thoughts, uh, the negative thinking and challenge the self-doubt. And even when there's failure, even when the, you know, something's gone wrong with the cow and, the, and the, you're frustrated with the farmer, the farmer might be angry, even in, in these situations, there is something positive in terms of the achievement of getting a diagnosis. So it's like really focusing on what the positives that can be drawn out of these situations and learning to cope when things aren't so good. So the, 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 the project that we're funded to do in this year is an exploration of how vets cope with the daily challenges of farm animal practice. And um, the, Rebecca mentioned earlier that vets trust vets. So what we want to hear from is the experiences of livestock vets themselves, their words, how they cope themselves, not necessarily how they should cope or, you know, because we kind of know there's so many th area, uh, so many techniques, ways of coping, um, uh, strategies, but how what vets are actually using successfully in practice. Drawing from that and looking at what tools could be developed so that they can be accessed by others. Um, and I would like to test um, a web app, um, unfortunately it won't be able to be uh, downloaded on a smartphone, but it can be accessed with internet access. And then that will, to see, it, it will be led by what the vets themselves say, but if there's a way, a mechanism that we can quantify some of the contributions that they're making, and you help, you, that they make a facility so that they can use that as a tool. And hopefully I'll be back in a couple of years' time to present our results. Uh, some of the aspects of the study that we're in, this is quite focused and, and it's targeted at the routine activity of livestock vets. I know that there are other challenges that vets experience and um, from relationships, uh, very difficult to maintain relationships when you're <coughs> working the hours that a livestock vet does. Um, relationships within practices, but uh, we're focusing at the moment on the activities that the vets do on a daily basis. So thank you very much, and I look for the, these are some of the references that I've used, and I thank you very much for your time, and I'd be very, very interested in speaking to you, <coughs> especially if you're a livestock vet, <coughs> excuse me, or if you know any, and then I can pass on details. Uh, so we'll hopefully be interviewing vets very shortly. Okay, thank you. Thank you.